Oh, Rosanna, you're too good to me. You're so tense. I know. Mm. Come here. What? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Where are you going? I'm going back here where it's safe. I was about to forget where we were. I was hoping you would. Forget it. I came here to help you relax. Mm. It's a good thing, too. Boy, your shoulders are like one big knot. I know. I just sort of tensed up when Connor was indicted. Mm. Well, at least your mother's not letting it get to her. I can't believe she's actually planning on throwing herself an anniversary party in the middle of all this. I've decided to go. Evan, what? And I'm hoping you'll come with me. It's for Connor's sake. Your dad's been making noises yeah, about pulling the Connor, the cabin account. And if he does, it might panic the other clients, could start a mass exodus. Now I've got to go talk him out of it. And if you're there, it'd be a really big help. Evan? Oh, hi, hi, Rosanna. Hi. Uh, listen, I'm a little worried about this terrorist, Hans, the one that knocked me off the cover of the City Times. According to Damien, he has targeted Kingsley Malta. Now, if this is true, then Walsh Montgomery executives could also be targets. Great. So I think that we ought to beef up security around here and warn all the staff members. Which reminds me, did Holden say anything about having an appointment this afternoon? I saw him when he got back from Damien's. He's probably in his office. No, he's not. I, I can't seem to find him anywhere. Something's wrong. I know it. Lily, you've got to tell Damien tonight. You've got to tell him it's over and tell him that you're leaving him. You're right. I'll tell him tonight. I want to go with you. Why? I don't want you to be alone with him. I'm afraid of what he might do. There's nothing to worry about. Damien would never hurt me. I'm sorry, Holden. Lily didn't come in to work today. I spoke to Damien and he told me that she wasn't feeling well. So I hear this terrorist Hans showed up here at the benefit on the yacht. I hope this doesn't mean that you and Lily are in any danger. Your concern for me is touching, but I can't take care of myself and my wife. Lily, what's happened? Where are you? What's this all about, Damien? Lily's been kidnapped. What? Hans called me here, said he had her. When? Late last night. She's been missing all day, but I didn't know until then what happened. Why the hell didn't you go to the police with this? He warned me not to. Look, I'm very worried about Lily's safety. What he might do. Did he demand a ransom? No. He said he'd call again. I've stayed by the phone ever since, but I haven't heard from him. So now we know what Hans was doing in Oakdale, but why would he target you and your family? Damien, if you want to help your wife, you're going to have to cooperate with the authorities 100%. You're going to have to tell them everything that you know. Everyone's looking for Hans from Scotland Yard to Interpol. Why would he be here to kidnap your wife? to you today by Tide. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide. <sighs> the Valletta will be in Mr. Grimaldi's suite. Thank you, Alan. Okay, we're going to keep the phone lines open here until the FBI 
gets here. I happen to know the man who's heading this investigation. His name is Alan McLean. You can't do any better than that. I hope this isn't a mistake. I don't want the Oakdale police involved. The Oakdale in this. police are already involved in this. They're going to be working very closely with the FBI. They will keep it quiet if that's what you're worried about. I'm afraid I don't have as much faith in the authorities as you do. I've had too much experience with them. Could my cousin Eduardo advised me on If your cousin Eduardo advised you to cooperate with Hans, then you got some very bad advice, my friend. Now, I'm sorry you didn't tell us about this sooner. We need to put a tap on that phone so we can trace that call if Hans calls you back. What if Hans knows that phone is tapped? Believe me, he will not know. This is not going to put Lily in any more danger than she's already in. So, why don't you tell me what you know about Hans before Mr. McLean gets here? I know nothing about him. Except that he obviously targeted Kingsley Malta. He's the one who tried to kill Patricia Kingsley. And for all I know, he was responsible for Bertram's murder as well. He's a mercenary. You know who he works for? If I knew, don't you think I would have gone to the authorities? Oh, come on, Tom. I know Duncan McKegney believes that my family had Bertram murder and tried to do away with Patricia as well. I wonder what he say about this. Would he still think Hans is working for me? When was the last time you saw Lily? Yesterday morning. She left early for WOAKI. I didn't speak to her ever since. When did you realize she was missing? We've had some difficulties. When she didn't come home in the evening, I thought she might be staying at Cal's or Emma's. I didn't know Hans has been sitting in Oakdale until Duncan came here last night and told me. I became alarmed after that. Shortly after midnight, I got a call from Hans. OK. Um, what were Lily's plans yesterday? I, uh... Who was the last person to see her? Thanks, Martin. Security's gonna check all IDs, and they're gonna clear all visitors before they can let them through. Great. Still wish I knew where Holden went, though. Why? What do you need him for? I've been trying to get in touch with Jack Forbes from National Home Care just to assure him that my legal troubles aren't gonna screw up the job we've been doing for them. But he's not returning my calls. Mm -hmm. So since Holden is, uh... Working on that account, I thought I'd just see what he thinks. Connor, Evan just told me that my gem of a father is thinking of pulling the Cabot Motors account. Well, I'm sure that's my mother's idea since she's convinced that I killed Link. Come on, she can't actually think that. She as much as said so, Rosanna. Not that it's uh, getting in the way of her anniversary celebration plans. You know, she actually invited me to the party, but said she would understand if I didn't make an appearance. I was just telling Rosanna that I'm going. I'm going to try to talk some sense into Alex, and it would really be nice if she would come with me. Connor, um, what do you think? Do you think it would actually help if I went with him and tried to talk to him myself? Well, it certainly couldn't hurt. But listen, I know how you feel about Gross Point and the whole scene there, so don't do anything you don't want to do, okay? Well, I hope you're not busy, because I've got some news. Hal, tell me you found something that's going to help with my defense. Well, I don't know about that, but it could help swing public opinion in your favor. It's about Marcy Lafferty. that the bar was open. It's not. I'm just practicing. Serving coffee may be the only kind of job I can get after this. Oh, I'm sure you'll have plenty of commission once that Riverwalk is open. From what I've seen, it's terrific. <laughs> wow, you're really getting the supportive sister act down, aren't you? No, I was just giving you my honest opinion. Huh. Oh. Well, appreciate it. So, um... 
You want to go see the gallery space where we're going to have Neil's exhibit? Um, I promised Lucinda that we would meet her here. She'll be by soon. So, uh, hmm. Survived your first night in the mansion. Yep. You see why Dad liked it so much. I, I resisted the sauna, though. But I woke to breakfast in bed. <laughs> you know, and then I found out that the elves came in while I slept and they cleaned and they pressed my clothes. Now, I can't exactly figure out when they slipped in to do that. <laughs> I didn't sleep all that well. Oh, yeah? Hmm. What's the story with Lucinda's son-in-law, Craig? Why? I went down to the library about midnight to get a book, and he was there. Apparently, he couldn't sleep either. It was his wife's birthday. He seemed to be bummed out that he wasn't with her. Yeah, well, I'm not the guy to ask about him. We don't get along all that well. Would you know why he's working up here when his family's in Montega? No idea. Uh, but I assure you he has an agenda. I couldn't tell you what it is, but probably has something to do with Lou and her company. Well, then why aren't his children and his wife up here with him? All I know is that she's some kind of VIP in the Montegan government. Hey! Hey. How come you're not working? Oh, actually, I am, sort of. Lucinda asked me to come down here and take a tour of the gallery space for her. Wow. Well, I think she'd want to do that herself. Well, she does, but she got an opportunity she couldn't pass up, a chance to steal a client from someone we both know. She's meeting with him now. Boy, I'm surprised you go along with that, knowing how you feel about Emily. Oh, I think Emily can handle anything that Lucinda or anyone else throws at her. <laughs> But I shouldn't have to tell you that. And the studies showed a 50% decrease in the incidence of heart attacks in those patients. So the antioxidants, vitamin C, beta-catechin, better uh, still, beta-carotene and vitamin E show great promise in the fight against cancer. While vitamin E appears to reduce the risk of heart disease as well. This is Dr. Bob Hughes with today's Medical Minute. Oh, also known as Dr. Fumble. Oh, Janice, we should do that again, shouldn't we? Oh, let's keep it just like that. It was great. Janice. No, I'm serious. It will humanize you for us. You mean Dr. I need to be humanized? Well, I was just reporting to you that might okay. be the case. Whatever you say. Hey, hey, hey. Hi. How's it going? Uh, great. We just finished. Anyway, oh. there is no danger of me becoming the family television star. <laughs> oh, honey, I'm so relieved. I was worried about that. <laughs> Actually, he was terrific. Oh, Wait until you see the tape. Okay. Oh, you want your microphone back. i got to get some beta carrots. <laughs> okay. Oh, I just, oh, Parker, we just finished taking the medical minute. It was dynamite. Great. I just got off the phone with Marcy Lafferty's lawyer and cleared it with him to tape a follow-up interview when we give her the check. Why would you do that? There are people out there that are interested in this story. No, no. All we have to do is give the woman her check and report that we've done it. That's all. I, I think we can do another interview with her without being unfair to Connor. Oh, please. Uh, Janice, her. Janice could just tell her before the interview that we're not going to air any kind of accusation that might bias the jurors before the trial. Right. And if she says anything out of line, we'll just edit it out. She's already accused Connor of murdering Link Lafferty. The public has already heard that part. I don't believe either one of you. In the first place, she hasn't offered one shred of new evidence the way she promised she would. Now, the only way you're ever going to get a fair interview out of this one is to gag her. She comes in, we give her the check, and no interview, period. It's bad enough that we aired the first interview. Okay. You're the boss. Isn't she ever? So I don't know about Kim Hughes, but her station manager is certainly hot to do another interview. <laughs> so am I. Only after they hand over all that money for my adoring fans. Oh, they're going to take that, too. They're going to make a whole little ceremony out of it. Just don't reach for the check too eagerly. Oh, don't worry. But I do worry. We don't want to appear greedy. Hey, it is all for Little Link Jr.'s college fund, right? <sighs> <laughs> Ugh, boy, do I hate this town and most of its inhabitants. You know, my life was going great until I hit Oakdale. After that, 
It's all gone to hell on a bobsled. Well, you shouldn't have tried to double-cross the center wall. Oh, I'll get even with her one day. Running me out of town and blackballing me in the business world. <laughs> I've had to get by on my wits ever since. Your wits or your looks? Luckily, I have both, and I know how to use them, friend. All right, now, when are we going to clear up this thing, okay? What's your hurry? I want to get the hell out of this rotten town. If I have to look at that old bad Hannah one more time, drooling over that child, I think I'm going to go nuts. Now, try to live with it. There is no way that you're going to collect Link's estate before Connor Walsh is tried and convicted. Now, you see, this is your problem. You get greedy, you get impatient. You know what, Fred? You are starting to work my nerves. Well, that makes us even, because you've been working mine ever since you got back to town. Now, why don't you just relax and do as I tell you? Now, why should I? Because I'm the one that found Charlotte for you, remember? looking for a yacht called the Valletta. Do you know it? It's right over there. Thanks. So when Charlotte Overton Zant told me that, I got kind of curious. And then as soon as I saw the snapshot, that cinched it. Thank you so much for following up on this. Hey, you should thank Rosanna. She's the one that got Charlotte's address. I just can't believe Marcy would actually stoop so low. Well, you don't know her. Doesn't surprise me a bit. Well, so what should we do with this? I'm not sure yet. Yes? Hold on. It's Kirk. I'll get rid of him for no, you. No. Hi, this really isn't a good time right now. I, I don't know about tonight. Things around here are just... Okay, I'll talk to you then. Bye. Why do you keep seeing that creep after what the City Times has done to you? It's not Kirk's fault. Uh, no, he, he's just the editor. Yeah, but he doesn't pull any strings over there. It's Lucinda's paper. Actually, when I tell Kirk what you found out, Marcy may be on the front page herself. I talked to her this morning. She's going to WOAK to collect her donations that poured in after she made that pathetic TV appearance with Link Jr. Undoubtedly, she's looking for more airtime so she can thank the lovely people of Oakdale and drag Connor to the mud a little more, probably. Marcy's gonna be at WOAK today? Yeah. I gotta call Kim. Why? What are you gonna do? Wait. Alan McLean, Damian Grimaldi. This is Agent Duffy. Mr. Grimaldi. I know this is a difficult time for you. I assure you, we're going to do everything we can to bring your wife back safely. Look, her safety is my only concern. I'd pay any ransom. That man is a killer. Tom has filled me in a little on the phone. I should have the file on Hans here within the hour. You still haven't heard from him? We're going to put a tap on the phone so we can record and trace all incoming calls. Then you and I will talk. I need to hear from you anything you can tell me about the possible motive for a kidnapping. FBI? Oh, yes, FBI. Don't let the uh, carnation fool you. He's one of the best investigators they've got. What's going on? Holden, what are you doing here? No, 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 what's no, the no. Truth? What's no, no. going on? No. Where is Lily? Who are these men? Stay out of this. Damn Holden. where is she? You gotta calm down, Holden. Who are they? Police? FBI? What's happened to Lily? Who is this guy? They used to be married to Mrs. Grimaldi. Does this have anything to do with Hans? What do you know about Hans? That he was a hitman who tried to kill off one of his business partners last year, and that he's in Oakdale now. Are you going to tell me, or do I go to the Argus and talk to Duncan McKechnie? If you tell anyone about this, Lily could be killed. Why? What's happened? Uh, um, Lily's been missing for a day. Damien got a call from Hans last night. He says he has kidnapped her. These gentlemen are from the FBI. Is she all right? He says he has not harmed her. We expect a ransom call. They're going to put a trace on the phone. What can I do? Anything? Stay out of this. Uh, that's good advice. You're only going to endanger Lily Moore. That's right. There's nothing you can do. Unless you have information that will help this investigation, you better go now. Let us get on with our work. If anything happens to her, 
I hold you entirely responsible, Grimaldi. Sorry, I have to say this. You are a genius. It is the best gallery space that I have ever seen. I've got ideas about lighting, about where we can hang the paintings. I can't wait to start on the framing. <laughs> what? What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. No. no. Why were you looking at me like There's that? Nothing. What did I say? It's just, uh, for a minute there, you reminded me of somebody. Neil? Well, I'm sure glad I took the tour. Royce, I must confess, this is one hell of a design. And it is no surprise that Ralph didn't have any trouble renting out all the shops. Thank you. Of course, it would have been easier if it had been done on time, but what the heck? <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing the openings here. Lord knows I've had enough time to think about what I'm going to say. No doubt, since your only other responsibility seemed to be playing errand boy for Lou. Mr. Keller? Yeah. The electrician's here. Save my seat. Why don't you and Royce like each other? Oh, that's just your imagination. How are you two getting along? Better than I expected. Good. Yeah, I think I like having a brother. Yeah? How do you like having a sister? Oh, I adore Lucinda. Don't yeah, get me wrong. I, I, mean, know, I know. She's giving you the full court press, huh? Yeah. You know, I don't know why. Um, a woman like her and her position, you know, she's surrounded by family, friends, employees. Why is it so important for her to get to know a half-sister? She never laid eyes on until a few weeks ago. Well, Lucinda isn't as surrounded by family and friends as it may seem. When she divorced John Dixon, it left a hole in her life. Her daughter Lily wants nothing to do with her. She actually went to court to get her adoption disaffirmed. I think that one hurt more than the divorce. Royce had mentioned something about a daughter that she was on the outs with. Mm -hmm. How does Lucinda and your wife get along? Fine. They never see each other. <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> What's Sierra like? You never talk about her. Haven't you had enough family history for one day? No. Why won't you talk to me about your wife? <laughs> What's the big secret? There is no secret. Look, I mean, what can I say? She's Lucinda's natural daughter. Her father was a man named Jacobo Esteban. He's a wealthy Montague. When Lucinda divorced Esteban, and left Montega, she had to leave Sierra behind. Sierra was raised by her father. He was killed in the revolution, and Sierra had to go into hiding. Lucinda sent me in to find her and get her out. You went into Montega in the middle of a revolution to look for a woman that you'd never seen before? You're crazy, huh? Yeah, well, it gets crazier. I didn't even know she was Lucinda's daughter. That was a little white lie, Lucinda told me. <laughs> and when I did finally find Sierra, she was in disguise. And I thought that she was a little boy. <laughs> oh, man. We went through so much together. She really is a remarkably brave woman. 
We were separated once, and, um... I thought that I had lost her. So I went back to the States alone. And then one day, Sierra showed up in Oakdale. She managed to get out somehow. Oh, man, I can't tell you how I felt. It's an incredible story. Yeah, well, we didn't exactly ride off into the sunset after that. Lucinda put a few obstacles in the way. Why? <sighs> Lucinda Walsh likes to control the lives of people that she loves. You'll find that out if you don't know it already. She set up Sierra with this hero of the Montegan resistance. And Sierra married him. He treated her like garbage. Finally, one day she left him. And we were married. And now you have a son and a daughter. <laughs> well, it's obvious that you love your wife very much. But why are you up here working for Lucinda when your wife and children are thousands of miles away? You won't bother me if you don't sleep till a week from Thursday. Just get it done, all right? Listen up. Lou just calls. She wants us to join her at the Falcon Club for dinner. Sorry. I don't have a thing to wear. You don't have to change. You look great. Nope. I can't stay here another night anyway. I've got to get back to Chicago and look for a job. What's with this Snyder guy? I got the feeling that he and Grimaldi don't like each other. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> Could Snyder possibly be mixed up with Hans in any way? Mm, no, no. I, I've known Holden Snyder for a long time. Uh, trust me on this one. We trust him to keep his mouth shut? To stay out of the investigation? Yeah, he's not going to do anything to endanger Lily, I'm sure. Any word? Okay. We're all set. If this guy calls, we'll know where he is. I've checked the club. Everything seems to be all right. Listen, I still think he should be better to close tonight. That might raise questions, Mr. Grimaldi. The fewer people who know about the kidnapping, the better the chances we have of getting your wife back safely. I hope you know what you're doing. Damien, look, um, I know you're very concerned. It's going to be... It's going to be all right. I need to go check on my children. I will be available to you if you need me. I know Red has some questions for you. I want you to answer them. I want you to shave, clean up, put on your evening clothes, go down and carry on business at the Falcon Club as if nothing is wrong, okay? Um, hang in there. It'll be okay. Right, though. Mr. Grimaldi. I need to know everything you can tell me about your wife's movements over the past few days. Where she went, who she met with. Okay, everything looks good, except I want that chair over here next to mine. Okay, Steve, thank you. Okay, thanks. Well, I've got to get back to Memorial. Will you still love me even without my makeup? Oh, my hero. Listen, any chance you can stick around for a bit? Why? What are you up to? Well, remember the telephone call I got a few minutes ago? Yeah, but you've been acting very mysterious. Exactly. Right? Listen. Stick around. Get another cup of coffee. It's going to get interesting. Yeah. Okay. What's yeah. going on? Uh, I changed my mind. I've decided we're going to tape Marcy, accepting the check, and do an interview. Excellent. Great. That's great. I'm glad you changed your mind. Well, you were right. This is news, definitely news, and we're going to run with it. Now, they're due here any minute. Uh, if you want to check the paperwork on the check, it's right up there. And uh, I've decided that I'm going to do the interview myself. Okay? Good. 
No, whatever you oh, want. I kept you waiting. Oh, no, didn't no, really give no, much no. notice. Hi, hi. No, it's fine. We just uh, finished setting up. Everything else set, Mr. Winslow? Uh, yep, ready to go. Okay, great. Thank you, Miss Hughes. Yeah. I'm very glad you decided to do this. Well, I felt <clears throat> as if our audience has a right to hear anything that Mrs. Lafferty would like to say. Mm -hmm. I do have a check. I'm going to do the interview myself, and if you would like to have her sign this release, then we can get started with the interview. Oh, one moment. I do feel my client should have edit approval of the interview. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We can't do that. That's so what's against our policy. Really, it's, it's fine, okay? <clears throat> She's very anxious to, to get the money for Link Jr.'s education. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Parker, you want to make sure that they're ready in the control room? Okay. We're set out here. Mr. Greer, go. shall I go with you? Okay. Ladies, come here, sweetie. Oh, precious boy. Oh, oh sweetheart. Now, since you're going to be doing the interview and accepting the check, maybe it would be good for your nanny to come and join us on the set. You could sit right on the sofa together, okay? All right. Okay, okay fine. Sweetheart. There you go. Come on. We're going to do a television show. <laughs> Just be careful. Watch your feet here. All right. Yes. Those big blue eyes. <laughs> We're gonna look at those big blue eyes. That's good. Yes, sit right here next to me, Marcy. Okay. Uh, you comfortable? Okay. Uh, are they ready in the control room? Ready. Okay, doke. Let's go. <clears throat> Five, four, three. I'm here with Marcy Lafferty. You'll remember that Mrs. Lafferty's husband, Link Lafferty, died under tragic circumstances last year, leaving Mrs. Lafferty and her little boy to fend for themselves. Thanks to the generosity of our viewers at WOAK, I have a check that I would like to present to Mrs. Lafferty. It is our hope here that this check will provide a much brighter future for your little boy. Okay, turn off the camera. What is Connor Walsh doing here? Keep things rolling until I say differently. This woman murdered my in husband. The interest, what is she doing in here? In the interest of fairness, I have invited Connor Walsh, whom Mrs. Lafferty has accused of murdering her husband, to join us here in the studio. Excuse me, but I am not the only one who's accused her. Yes. She has been indicted by the grand Thank jury. Thank you. Yes, but what we're is going to be on fair here? about Beats this. Me. It's she Jim's deliberately show. told my husband lies Mrs. about Lafferty. me. Mrs. Lafferty, please. I knew Link would see through her, and when he did, she shot and killed him before he had a chance to change his will, leaving my little boy, Link's son, without a dime. Well, now, it really is true that this little boy's had a very difficult life. In fact, I just found out that he recently came through some very serious surgery. Would you like to tell us about that, Mrs. Lafferty? Yes, um, it's true. He had a very serious operation. Of course, I have no medical insurance, uh, so it really wiped out my entire savings, what little I had. Well, now, it's interesting that you didn't mention that during your first interview. Well, it was much too painful. Listen, I didn't want to be a charity case. All I want is justice. Well, of course, that's all any of us want. And in fact, in the interest of justice, I have asked Mr. Hal Munson to join the discussion. Hal, would you like to come up here, please, and join us? Mr. Munson was previously with the Oakdale Police Department and has been acting as an investigator in the Lafferty case. For Connor Walsh. Let's get that straight. Thank you. Uh, Hal, go ahead. Well, I've learned some new facts about the case. Why are you involved in this anyway? Well, you don't object to Mr. Munson sharing what he's found in his investigation, do you? No, why should I? Good. I don't have anything to hide. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear that because I had a talk with this little boy's great aunt earlier today. Mr. Munson, you must be mistaken. I don't have any aunts. You may not, but Charlotte Overton does. Charlotte is my son's nanny. What does her aunt have to do with anything? Miss Overton? Would you like to explain that to us? I have an idea you'd feel a lot better if you told us the truth. <laughs> Wait a minute. I have told the truth here. Mrs. Overton. Look, 
It is very obvious what's happened Ms. here. Ms. Overton. Connor Walsh has hired this guy. Ms. Overton, whose child is this? Ms. Overton. He's mine. Shut do, do you want to tell us what happened? No, I will handle Please, this. Please, let her talk. Look, this interview is no, over. I minute, am out minute. of here. You want a chance to respond, don't you? Now sit down and let her speak, and then you'll have your chance. Go ahead, Ms. Overton. Tell us what happened. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Miss Lafferty came to me a few weeks ago. Somehow she knew that uh, my husband had died, and I was in debt. And my son had had an operation, and he needed another one. She's lying. No, wait she a minute. Let her finish. Lying. You'll have a chance to finish your Go ahead. Don't be frightened. Go on. She, she said she would pay my debts if she could pretend to be Charlie's mother for a few days. I didn't know what I was getting into, and I needed the money. So I went along with it. So in other words, None of what Mrs. Lafferty has said about this little boy is what the truth. What are you doing here? What are you trying is that to correct? pull? What it's is so this? Lie. What is this? It's a setup? lie. Okay, great. She says it's a lie. Now, we would like to hear anything you have to say. <laughs> Forget it. You'll hear what my lawyers have to say. Okay, that's a wrap. You stupid idiot! All right, leave her alone. Leave her alone. You did that. Now what do you have to say for yourself, genius? Good question. Sounds like we're talking fraud. I'm as shocked as you are. I had no idea any of this was going on. Right. Now, you were pregnant when you left Oakdale. Exactly what happened to Link's baby? Three guesses. So let me get this straight. You did all of this just to get Link's money. <laughs> and it will be my money once you're convicted. Don't you worry about that, babe. Well, don't count on it. Shut up, Evan! That little stunt you pulled was illegal. I suggest you get a lawyer, and I wouldn't recommend Fred Greer because, well, he'll be up on his charges of his own. Hey, little heiress. I got a prediction for you. Evan's gonna propose, but don't kid yourself. It won't be love. He just can't wait to get all his little hands on that money. Whoa, talk about <laughs> setup. I couldn't believe huh? it. I couldn't believe it. It went just like I hoped. Listen, I've got tape to edit for the 5 o'clock news. I'll see you later. Okay. <laughs> and what time is boarding? Thank you. Oh, that was a great idea you had, Fred. Borrowing a kid? My idea? Oh, you know it was. Oh, that would have been fraud. I could never have thought of something like that. Now, if you hadn't been so anxious to get rid of the child you were carrying... Now, how did I know I was going to be a widow so soon? I could have at least waited for the money. At least they don't have that on tape. You know what? It doesn't really matter. The fact is, I am still Link's widow, and I will get my money once Connor Walsh is convicted. Good thought. I suggest you get another lawyer to collect it for you. Where are you going? I've always had this morbid fear of prison. I'm leaving town. I suggest you think about it, too. Oh, and one last thing. I really wouldn't cash that check. Hans is a real pro. Yeah, he doesn't make many mistakes. And now he's got nothing to lose. Going by his M.O., chances are Mrs. Grimaldi's already dead. I hope you're wrong. But it would fit the pattern. He's a real psychopath. Uh, Adam, keep an eye on your brother. I gotta make a quick phone call.
Holden. Hi. Uh, listen, if you've come here for more Tom. information, I've pretty much Tom, told Tom, you. Tom, that's not why I'm here. There's something that you should know. It might help finally. A CBS exclusive. During the Olympics, Tom Arnold, loving husband and devoted father, finally gets his just desserts. Stay tuned for more about Tom. Damien and Holden are desperate to get Lily back, but will they destroy each other before she's found? Tomorrow, as the world turns and your lies and drinking have driven your wife away, can you convince her to take you back? Billy's gonna try, but will he succeed? Next on Guiding Light. Good Lad of Philadelphia. Jewelry by Monet. Join us tomorrow for As the World Turns.